let's see, shielding gas. We'll talk about shielding gas right now. So what we're going to use for pretty much everything you're going to do in our shop is 100% argon. Um, with water processes, a lot of times they want a little CO2 in the mix. They need a little bit of oxygen in that shielding gas to make the fluxes work, to make um, the, uh, the, the oxidizers work. They need that. Well, TIG, we don't want any of it. We want to run pure argon, as clean as we can get. Um, the only time we'll add something to that is if, we're, if we want to get the arc much hotter and try to weld kind of um, well thicker stuff than we normally could with the same amperage. And in that case, we'll add helium to it. Sometimes a little bit, sometimes a lot, depending on what we're doing. But helium really makes the arc hotter, and it really allows us to penetrate deeper and get better fusion on thick stuff that otherwise it would take much too long to heat up. We're not going to run any helium. It's very expensive, and when you when you need to, to run helium in a shop, they'll show you how to do that. Um, it's just hotter, basically. Um, gas flow. So flow rate is another really important thing when it comes to TIG welding. Um, too much is actually worse than not enough. There's a couple of pretty good illustrations in the book about that, showing um, gas cup angle and shielding gas. So when we're when we're dealing with Gun angles. And this is our, our gas cup. Here's our tungsten sticking out of the end of it. It goes back up in here to call it. Um, first off, this stick out. A, a good general rule is that the max stick out here is going to be about the inside diameter of our gas cup. So if this gas cup is number seven, which means the opening is 7 16 of an inch. That means our maximum stick out is going to be about 7 16 of an inch. Okay? That'll, that'll solve a lot of problems if you're doing that right. So, back to what we are talking about with, with angle. TIG welding, you don't, want to, you don't want a lot of angle, you don't want a lot of push angle. And in TIG welding, we're almost always going to push. We almost never drag. I, in welding, there's, there's very rarely, like never, I almost never drag. I almost, I will always push. So I'm leaned over that way, which means I'm going to be heading in that direction. Got my base metal down here. So that space right there, very, very important. With TIG welding, you want this tungsten so close it's almost floating in the puddle. It's almost floating in the puddle. Um, you don't need very much arc length at all of this. Okay? You want pretty much close you get it without dipping it. And if you're doing it right as you add filler, it'll raise the puddle enough you might dip. And that's okay. If you're not dipping your tungsten, probably every two or three welds, you're not close enough. You're just not close enough. So get close. Um, for me, on 10 gauge, which is what we're going to start off with, that gap's going to be 3 30 seconds of an inch, which is about my filler metal diameter. It's also my tungsten diameter if you need a visual reference. This time I'm going to be really close. So, long story short, um, long story long actually, back to angle and gas coverage. So, at this angle, as my shielding gas comes out of this, I've got a pretty good shielding envelope. Okay? If I were to really steepen my angle, A couple things happen. One of them is, if I have this same stick out here, my arc length is way too long at this point. I've taken this angle, tilted it over so much that I can't get my arc length now with the same stick out. So I might have to stick my tungsten out farther. Well, we don't want to do that because the farther we get it out, the harder we're going to have time to covering that tungsten. The other thing that happens is, as this gas flows out, this little angle in here, this creates all kinds of problems because out in here, you've got atmosphere. Okay, it's got oxygen in it. Oxygen is really bad for the welding pump. Now what happens is you get this steep angle, it'll start to pull this stuff in and mix it with your cover gas. Then you'll start getting porosity issues and contamination problems. So we want to steepen this back up about like this and that'll solve 90% of our problems. So as far as flow rate goes, um, if, if you're just running a, our, our standard number seven gas cup, 
15 to 20 CFH, that's cubic feet per hour, is what you want. That's a really good, really good starter section, okay? Um, this will change as we go up in cup size. The bigger cup we have, the more gas we're gonna need to get the same amount of coverage. So if I went from a number seven to some giant, like number 12, this might be 25 CFH. Not a huge, not a huge increase, but more. Um, or if you're using a gas lens, gas lenses create a giant shielding envelope. They're really nice. The problem is they use a lot of cover gas. So with a gas lens, with a big gas lens, I might be 20 to 30 even. Um, but too much gas coverage will do the same thing. We we're talking about turbulence down here. Too much gas coverage will, again, create turbulence around the shielding gas and pull in atmosphere and create all kinds of contamination issues. Another thing to think about too is the shielding gas isn't just there for the well puddle. The main reason it's there is for the tungsten. The tungsten will, you know, it's at a very high temperature. It's, it's running five, 6,000 degrees in that, you know, running that arc. If it's exposed to atmosphere, just like the well puddle, it will become contaminated and you'll have to go sharpen it. So we have pre-flow. Usually we run half a second of pre-flow, which will run shielding gas before we initiate the arc. That helps purge all the atmosphere out of the, out of the cup and out of the immediate area. And then after we're done welding, we have post-flow, which means it's going to flow gas for another five, six, eight, ten seconds after we're done. And that is to protect the well, it does that, but what it really does is protects this tungsten while it's cooling down um, past its critical state, okay? So post-flow is very, very important. Um, some material stainless steel is very important to shield that, that puddle after you're done, but we're also shielding the tungsten. Um, average controls. Most people will either run foot pedal or they'll run lift arc. Lift arc is kind of like stick welding. You set your amperage at the machine, um, you touch the electrode down, you lift it up, the arc starts, you weld, you've got one amperage. Foot pedal, you've got control over that amperage the whole time you're running it, okay? So if I set my machine at 120 amps, that foot pedal is going to give me a percentage of that. Uh, my lowest arc that will run, it might only be 40 amps. It doesn't go from 0 to 120. It'll probably go from 30 or 40 to 120, but I have control while I'm welding. So when I start welding, I put my foot in the floor, I get all 120 amps. As I'm welding, it starts to get hot. It starts to get away from me. I can back off. I can throttle down on that amperage, get my scruples together, let everything cool down, then ease back into the amperage and keep going. Um, Lift arc is much more difficult because you actually have to know where your welder needs to be set. Because when you start welding, it is what it is. If you set it at 120, you got 120. So in the shop, most of you will run the pedal. I like to run the pedal. But if you're looking to go out and get a TIG welding job, at some point in the first week, try to transfer over to lift arc because that's what everybody does in the shops. You know, when you're hanging off a ladder 20 feet in the air, you don't have a pedal you're going to lift arc. So learn learn to lift arc, and what, what that will do is it will take the training wheels off. You'll have to know where to set your machine. You'll have to know how to how to stop your arc and not blow the edge of the plate away. So it's don't start off doing it. Give it a week. Get get a good feel for TIG welding with the pedal. Switch to lift arc if, that's, if you want to go out and work in the industry because um, it'll make you way better a lot faster. So um, what's to do this week? We're gonna have, we're gonna watch, you're watching this video, that's one of the things down. Forum assignment, watch YouTube videos, and then do your test at the end. Um, really, that's about it. If you have any questions about this, get with us in the lab, or get with us online, and we'll answer the best we can. Thanks.